Hey out there, it's Gavin Syme, and I want to talk a little bit today about tones because I've been experimenting a bit with them in terms of getting really rich, deep color tones, specifically in black and white photos. Uh, it's something that on the surface seems really simple. I mean, I've made lots of Lightroom presets in my collections and things like that to give color tones, and you can get some cool stuff. But what I found myself doing is looking at like old platinum prints and classical ways of making pr prints. Platinum is a process that I find really intriguing. It's a real expensive process. It's real labor intensive and uh, it uses actual platinum and it gets these really rich tones. And there's other stuff too, but I, I wanted to look at a way digitally to get the tone that platinum offered. And to get that rich, doesn't always have to be the same hue, but get something that had that really rich depth of tone. Because what I'm finding when I really started looking at the tones I was getting in Lightroom and that sort of thing is they can be nice, but if I'm doing like a fine art piece or something, or if I want something that's really good, if I got one of my best of the best kind of photos and I want to do something special with it and make a really phenomenal print with it, I was, I was not really satisfied with the tones. And specifically for me, I kind of wanted that rich, warm, subtle brown tone, which is actually almost impossible to get in Lightroom. And I, I, some of you may be thinking, oh, yes, you can. You just go in here and you do split toning. Believe me, I've, I've played with that and you can get some cool tones. But the color gamut of the tones and the richness of them actually seems pretty limited with photo filters and split toning and stuff like that in Lightroom. So I started experimenting and what I did is I'm going to bring up some examples here. Let's start uh, let's start here. I'm just going to open this. Normally I'd be working from Lightroom, but for purposes of keeping things flowing here, I just exported some files. Now as you see, this has already been converted to black and white. I did this in Lightroom. This is South Dakota, I believe. It's from my fall 2010 trip. And Split Rock Park, I believe this is at. So I got this river scene, long exposure. Uh, like where I'm going with it, I've got uh, kind of some blurring in the trees, and you know, the, it, it 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 went the direction I want. And <clears throat> I thought, okay, I want to get a color tone with this. So I started working with it. What I've done, and I'm not going to try and drag this out too long here, but what I've done is essentially I've made an action. So what I'm going to do is talk a little bit about the tone, but I'm also making this video to demo this action. And it's the Platinum Palladium Emulsion action. There's also a quick black and white conversion action that I've made to go with this little mini set for uh, images that aren't already converted to black and white. But in general, my goal here is, you know, I'm going to get the black and white looking the way I want. And then my final, final process is going to be to get the tone that I wanted for going to print or whatever I want to do with it. So let me just switch to button mode here so I can work these actions a bit more. And let me just show you what this does. So first of all, to show you a contrast, let me just add, try and add a photo filter. Now this is more similar to like we could do in Lightroom or something like that. Here's a warming filter. And it does give a nice tone, but what I found is that it's limited. The tones always seem to have this kind of a cast to them. They don't have the richness and consistency that a lot of times you'll see in traditional hued vintage prints or photographers that use those processes in their prints. So let me just delete that layer. Let's go ahead and run the Platinum Palladium Emulsion action. And this is kind of a crazy action because it's, it's really long. It's extremely complex. I, I played with this for days trying to figure out how to do more than just a quick tone. It doesn't take too long to run, but when it's done, it gives you a ton of options. In a way, it's almost like a plug-in when it's done because there's so many variables. So here is the look. And let me bring it up a little bit. Let's hide the panels. Give you kind of a close-up. And what we have is just a really nice rich hued color tone and I, I don't know how well it'll come across on a monitor when you see this in print it makes a lot of sense I have it pretty mild because I'm not so much about really bold tones I wanted really a, a platinum type print from this is what the goal was so if if I want to stay true to that kind of platinum process I print it on a paper like a fiber rag or something like that and it gives kind of that low contrast, wide dynamic range, feel like like a traditional platinum print might have. And 
this this is about as close as I've gotten to being able to get these kind of hues. Can't be done in Lightroom at this time. Maybe that'll change eventually, but that's the reason I went to a Photoshop action. Uh, I'll pretty much always stay in Lightroom if I can do it there for purposes of workflow, but I had to go to a Photoshop action and get really involved with how I do this. So over here is what we have in this action, and there's layers here. Let me actually close the actions layer for now so it's not distracting. Um, so we have the cast intensity layer, which in, in, in adjusts the amount of the tone. So let me just kind of adjust some things as we talk. This is kind of the default, but the thing I like about this action is you can do an infinite number of things. So here I've turned up the cast. Let me make a snapshot. I'll just make some various options here. Um, here is the main tones. You can turn those up or down. There's there's shadow and density tones and stuff in here, contrast tones, all kinds of stuff that's controlling the way that this affects. There's diffusion detail in the way that the highlights are affected. Now, this is something you want to use subtly, but I was going to get that really authentic feeling vintage look. Um, there's a detail layer. Oopsies. And then let's open up the other options, and we have stuff to control the tones. So here's the overall tone intensity, but we can start turning on different layers to get different degrees of tones. Because in real platinum printing, you end up with different tones depending on how you print, how experienced you are, the chemical process you use. There's all kinds of variables. I didn't want to make an action where everybody's photo had this same brown tone. That may be a tone that I like, but everybody has their own kind of look. Here's another one. Let's go for more of a gold tone because you see this sometimes in uh, in a true platinum print as well. And you can adjust the opacity of this if you want to crank it up or down. You can mix and match these layers too. Here's the bronze tone. I mean, you could turn them all on and just get all these different variables. So what's happening here? Let me just click through some of these snapshots. Here's the original. Here's the default, which is just very subtle, but I really like this. And I'm just going to kind of switch through. Hopefully you're looking at this in high quality because I'm not sure how much they're showing up. This is this is a very subtle action. This is not about bold over the top effects. This is about subtle tones that are powerful. Let's take a look at this on another one. I'm going to close this image. And let's open up uh, this one from Yosemite. And I'll pop open the Actions palette and let's run the Platinum Palladium Emulsion again. So I have to say I'm really proud of this one. And it's uh, just one action, but there's a ton of options in here. And this was not easy to be able to get these tones. And when you see this in print, and there, there's a lot of depth, the detail, it works the shadows, it works the contrast a little bit. You can turn off a lot of things, but traditionally a platinum print would be... Uh, a bit more low contrast flat. It would have a lot of dynamic range, but th they come across flat. And you don't have to have it that way. You don't have to go for a traditional look on this. There's actually a tone, a, a, excuse me, a layer here to make even less tone if you want it even more flat. The paper you use also affects that. You can also adjust more or less contrast with different layers and that sort of thing. So again, there's lots of options. This one here, this is the default method. And let's go into the options. Let's add a bronzing. And this, again, it still feels like a platinum print to me. I'm going to do a bronzing and a little bit of gold, but dial the gold way back. So here's our original, and here's our toned. And let's just get in close again and take a look. This is El Capitan in Yosemite. It's getting really deep in and working the tones. There's a lot of uh, layers going on here that I won't try and explain them all, but there's shadow layers and detail layers and all kinds of stuff to try and get the look that I felt really would, would uh, be true to the idea of a platinum process. So anyway, you get the idea that is the platinum palladium action. And bottom line is what I found out is there's no way to get, if you want a really, really high quality and you really want to have that refined tone, I just couldn't do it in Lightroom. And maybe that'll change in the future, but I, I couldn't even do it with just a photo filter in Photoshop. I had to get in here and really work and work and work 
and play around until I found the right mix of layers and blending modes and all this different stuff to get the shadow detail and the richest, richness that I wanted on this effect. And the result is this Platinum Palladium Emulsion Action that is infinitely variable as far as tones. I mean, you can mix and match and turn on layers, and it's all right over here in the layers palette. Once you run this, just go through here and start adjusting opacities. Turn a layer on, turn a layer off, expand these, look at different options, and you can make this your own every single time. I mean, everybody that uses it could be using it completely different, but the end result on all of them is to get a nice, rich color tone that you couldn't otherwise achieve. So that is the Platinum Action, and uh, it's my thoughts on working with the color tones. You can find the Platinum Action on simefx.com if you want to learn more. There's also some more examples. And you can also apply it, actually. I should real quick add... Just to open this one up. You can apply this as well to a color image if you want. In general, my goal here was to do, you know, kind of the traditional platinum black and white image. But if you apply it to a color, this action in itself doesn't actually take the color away. It'll give you these tones on a color image, which in certain instances could be really cool. You could use it for an interesting effect. I don't know if this would be the best image to use it on. But, uh, you know, you could mix and match and add the hues and the tones on a color image as well. Alternately, you could also use the, the quick black and white convert action before and then run the platinum action if you haven't previously done a black and white conversion. But honestly, I would use uh, Lightroom or Photoshop or whatever you use for your conversions and get your black and white looking really good in the way you want it first and then apply your tones. And a quick tip, too... As we were working here, you may see some artifacting and stuff because we're in Photoshop. We're working with a lot of layers, and th you know there's there's some banding and artifacting going on that obviously is no good. Uh, if you work in 16-bit up here in Image Mode 16-bit, that's what you want to be working when you're doing. Well, I try and work in 16-bit as much as possible. It's it's slower, but with something like this, at least while you're running the action initially, you definitely want to be working in 16-bit to avoid artifacting and banding and stuff like that, because there's a lot of complex stuff being done to the image here, and the higher bit rate is going to keep the image clean and keep things looking good. I just ran an 8-bit for purposes of this. These are full-res files, but I ran them in 8-bit just so it didn't take too long and slow down the video. Anyway, that is the Platinum Action for Photoshop, and... Uh, I'm pretty happy with it. All right, everybody, take care.